The Marian apparitions of Lipa and Manawag in the Philippines. What's the story? What's the controversy? Let's find out. Thanks be to God, this is our 100th video. And thanks to you for actually thinking these semi-methodical mental musings are actually worth your time. We've gotten comments to do a video about these topics more than anything else. So here you go. You've earned it. Our Lady of Manawag. On the North Island in the Philippines, a few hours from Manila, lies an extremely popular pilgrimage site, the Basilica of Our Lady of the Rosary of Manawag. Under the care of the Dominican Order, it was declared a minor basilica by Pope Francis, with the solemn proclamation mass taking place in February of 2015. But why do people come? This is the reason. To pray to Apo Baquet, the lady who calls. The tale begins in 1610, when a farmer was walking down a country road when he heard a woman's voice. He was awestruck to see a beautiful lady surrounded by light and clouds atop a tree. The figure held a child in one arm and a rosary in the other. She told the farmer to have a church built in this location, and that her children would receive many favors. Who else would it be but the Virgin Mary? A busy town soon sprang up afterwards called Manawag, which translates as to call. Over the years, the protection of Our Lady has manifested on multiple occasions. These include miraculous outpourings of rain in times of drought, protection of crops against a locust swarm, bringing a child back to life and the curing of a man with a nasty throat infection, protection of the church against fires, bombs not exploding when dropped on the church during World War II. The church has officially recognized the devotion to Our Lady of Manawag. In 1926, papal nuncio Monsignor Guillermo Piani canonically crowned the Virgin in front of thousands of faithful. Our Lady of Lipa So it's a story with a lot of back and forth and passion on all sides. But let's start the story back in 1948 at a Carmelite convent in Lipa City. Postulate Teresita Castillo witnessed several apparitions of a lady wearing all white and holding a golden rosary. Her message was humility, penance, prayers for priests and religious, and the Pope, and to say the rosary. Additionally, the lady told Teresita four secrets. One for Teresita herself, one for the Carmelite convent, one for China, and one for the whole world. Not only that, but miraculous showers of rose petals were reported around the convent. It wasn't unheard of for these rose petals to bear images of Jesus or Mary and to lead to miracles of healing. The final appearance was on November 12, 1948. Before departing, the lady said to be called Mediatrix of All Grace. Anytime and anywhere Mary allegedly appears, both devotions and suspicions arise. Lipa is certainly no exception. By 1951, Teresita had left the comment, probably due, at least in part, to the debate surrounding the apparition. While the local bishop, Alfredo Versosa y Florentin, had approved devotion to Our Lady of Lipa in the diocese, the committee formed amongst the church hierarchy in the Philippines was not impressed. Quote, Until final decision on the matter will come from the Holy See, public devotion and the distribution of the supposed miraculous rose petals were not to happen. The consensus is that Pope Pius XII upheld a decision by the Vatican investigators that whatever seems to have happened in Lipa is not of supernatural origin. It seems there is an official document with the decision spelled out. It has not come to light because it would be held in the Vatican archives. Jumping ahead to February 1990, the nephew of one of the bishops who signed the negative judgment said his uncle was forced to do so under threat of excommunication, despite his personal belief that Our Lady of Lipa was authentic. The Bishops' Conference of the Philippines did not issue any statement at the time. At this point, you have to admit there's at least a little bit of murky water here. Meanwhile, Archbishop Mariano Gaviola lifts the ban on veneration and a statue is displayed in the Lipa Carmelite Convent Chapel. Moved to the 21st century and enter now emeritus Archbishop Ramon Agueres. He was vocal in his belief and support for the apparitions. He officially lifted the ban on public devotion and formed a new commission to investigate the apparitions and phenomenon surrounding Our Lady of Lipa. About a year after that, the Vatican basically said, we've looked into the matter for the commission and decided there is nothing supernatural going on here, so let this be the end of it. Of course, it wasn't the end of it. September 12th, 2015, Archbishop Ramon released an official statement declaring that the apparitions are supernatural and worthy of belief. December 2015, the Congregation of the Doctrine of Faith releases an official statement declaring the statement by Archbishop Ramon to be null and void. May 2016, Archbishop Ramon releases an official statement upholding the December 15 decree. Wrapping up the story here, in 2016, the Bishops' Conference of the Philippines released guidelines on personal and private devotions to Our Lady of Lipa in July. There's a link in the comments if you're interested. 
Finally, in November of 2016, Teresita passed away. So what do we make of all this? The Declaration of Mary as Mediatrix is a bit contentious. Some push for the Vatican to make it dogmatic. Another link in the description box if interested. Even just based on our brief overlook, it's easy to see that this matter is taken with great seriousness. Of course, at a fundamental level, if we decide to disregard the apparitions and the rose petals as not supernatural in nature, the Blessed Virgin Mary remains the same. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. So there you go. Once again, thanks be to God and thanks to you. This is video number 100 on Random Catholic Thoughts.